Hi, I want to show you an example of working with polyprotic acids when we're determining pH, the calculations. Um, I had given two big takeaways in the video that explains polyprotic acids. If you haven't watched that, go to the acid base equilibrium playlist and watch polyprotic acids. Here are your two uh, takeaways. Number one, when you're finding pH, use the first Ka. So first big takeaway, use the Ka1, so when you do the ice table, um, to find pH. The second big takeaway is whatever the last Ka is, so Ka2, that is going to be the concentration of the final product. So um, let's see, final concentration of product is going to equal your Ka2. But I want to show that to you. I want to prove this to you. Uh, so let's go ahead and work this together. Here's our information. We are given oxalic acid. It has an initial concentration of 0 0.10 molar. Um, and here's the question. We need to find pH. And it also wants to know the final concentrations of the oxalate ion and the hydrogen oxalate. Um, okay, so let's start with our ice table. You'll recall that um, with polyprotic acids, this is a diprotic since it's losing two hydrogens. Um, they lose hydrogens one at a time, and each hydrogen does its own chemical reaction. So here's gonna be my first reaction, that oxalic acid, that hydrogen, we're going to donate one hydrogen, and it will produce the conjugate base, which, which is hydrogen oxalate, um, and the hydronium. Now this species right here is going to be amphoteric. Here is a conjugate base, but when we rewrite it, it is going to do its own reaction with water to donate, lose, that second hydrogen right there, and it's going to act like an acid. So here was a conjugate base, but down here it's an acid, amphoteric. Um, so now it does its own reaction. It's going to donate that second hydrogen. So it donates that second hydrogen to produce an oxalate ion and the hydronium again. And this has its own Ka value. I want to point something out. Notice that Ka1 is significantly larger than Ka2. That will always be true of polyprotic acids, which with each successive deprotonation, deprotonation, each successive loss of hydrogen, the Ka value is smaller. It's going to be even more reactant favored. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do the ice table um, to find the equilibrium concentrations for our first deprotonation, losing that first hydrogen. So I, C, E, our initial concentration is 0 0.10. Water, uh, we don't include, because it's a liquid, we don't include liquids or solids, only aqueous and gases. Where we have zero of the oxalate, hydrogen oxalate and zero of the hydronium. So we're going to lose an amount of this oxalic acid and gain an amount of the hydrogen oxalate and the hydronium. Remember, we always look at the molar coefficients for every one mole that we lose, we're going to gain one mole and gain one mole. Um, so they're ones, I'll just write it as X. Love E, all we have to do is add these together, I plus C, and we get 0.1 minus X, zero plus X is X, zero plus X is X. Now let's go ahead and write the equilibrium expression. So Ka1 is going to equal product, that's our hydrogen oxalate times the hydronium, divided by the reactant, which was the oxalic acid. And remember, the water is not going to be included in that. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. Um, so we are going to have the 5.9 times 10 to the minus 2 equals x and x. I'm going to go ahead and multiply those and get an x squared divided by 0.1 minus x. And remember, that was just for my reactant. Okay, we can... Um, from here, this will be negligible because we will have a factor of um, 10 difference, 100 difference, and we're going to count that as negligible. Let's go ahead and solve. I'm going to do 0.1 times my uh, 5.9 times 10 to the minus 2 equals x squared. We'll multiply that and then we'll take the square root of both sides and we're going to get x equals let me see what we've got, uh, 0.0768. And that's going to be the molarity of X. Do you know what? I want to pause and tell you something really quick. So our rule on counting negligible 
right here is you have to have a factor of 100 different. If I were to write that as, um, pull it out of scientific notation, it'd be 0.059. Um, you, you know that that's the same thing and that's 0.1. That is actually only, if I put one here, that's only a difference of 10. You guys, I really should not count that as negligible. We should do the quadratic equation. I'm not going to though, to save time, okay? Um, so really, you have to have two zeros different. I'm only one zero different right there. Technically, I should do quadratic equation. But again, to save time. Um, in fact, if you wanna see how to do the quadratic equation with this, I have a form, I have a video that says quadratic equation. Not the point of this video. Point of this video is polyprotic acids. So don't let this throw you. Let's pretend this is a factor of 100 different. I'm going to count that as negligible. If I was really doing this, I would do quadratic equation to solve for x. Okay, so give me grace, please. Um, let's say that the x is a point at a 0, 7, 6, 8. Um, so I can come back and plug all of this in. We're going to get 0.1 minus 0 0.0768, and then we're going to have 0 0.0768. 0 0.0768. Okay, great. Um, well, I have, um, let's see, we can subtract this. Let me hurry and subtract it so you can see what it is. Uh, we are going to have, oops, let's see, one, we're going to have 0 0.0232. Okay, so now we can go to the second deprotonation. I'm going to hold on to this information before we tie everything together and finish it off. Um, so let's come to our second deprotonation. We're going to have ICE. Okay, so what's my initial concentration? Well, that comes from right here is what was produced when we did that first reaction. So the initial concentration is going to be 0 0.0768 water. We don't count since it's a liquid. Um, I'm not going to have any of the um, oxalate ion. Ooh, but guess what? We do have a hydronium. The hydronium is going to be 0 0.0768. Okay, change. We're going to lose an amount for every one mole we lose. We're going to gain one mole, gain one mole. So I'm just going to represent that as X. Um, let's go ahead and add this together. 0 0.0768 minus X. 0 plus X is X. 0 plus X is X. Okay, here's my Ka value. Let's go ahead and write the equilibrium expression. So Ka2 is going to equal, and that's going to be our oxalate ion, the C2O4 minus, oops, two. Sorry, you guys, I missed a two right here. Let's make sure we put, we lost two hydrogen, so it's a minus two, um, times H3O plus divided by the hydrogen oxalate, which was HC2O4 minus. Okay, so now we can plug in what we do have. My um, Ka2, 6.4 times 10 to the minus five equals, oh, now, do you know what? <laughs> Let's look at this. It's actually going to be plus 0 0.0768, right? That's not a zero. It was, um, 0 0.0768 plus the x. So let's plug everything in. This is going to be a little bit bigger problem. Uh, we're going to have x times this, x plus 0 0.0768 divided by, and then I have this over here, my product, 0 0.0768 minus x. Okay, now on this one, notice the concentration is um, going to be 10, I would say, let's see, this would be 10 to the minus two, if I were to do it as 7.68, and this is 6.4 times 10 to the minus five. So minus five minus two, that's three zeros different. Definitely, this X is going to be negligible. So here's the really cool part, watch this. This X is negligible, and remember the reason why is, once we actually find this concentration, that number is so small that when you subtract it from this number, the 0 0.0768 is still just 0 0.0768. Or if I add X to 0 0.0768, it's still just 0 0.0768 because X is going to be so much smaller in comparison. So I want you to see this super explicitly. That X is negligible, this X is negligible. I'm going to rewrite it so you can see it a little bit better. Check this out. It will be 6.4 times 10 to the minus five equals that X is negligible. X times 0 0.0768 
right? Because that X is so small, it's negligible. Divide it by oh, 0.0768, because that X also negligible. Check it out. Those concentrations cancel. X equals 6.54 times 10 to the minus five, which means this concentration is just the same. It equals the Ka2 value, that takeaway right there, that takeaway right there. Um, now, this right here, what I want you to notice, the hydronium ion, this number is so small. X is 6.4 times 10 to the minus five. You put 6.4 times 10 to the minus five plus 0 0.0768, guess what? It's still just 0 0.0768. So the pH only depends on the hydronium from the first Ka. There is your other takeaway. You use the ice table, um, the first ice table, Ka1, to find the pH, to find the pH. Um, so writing this all out, I'm going to use my pink marker to write all of our final answers. Um, it wanted to know the concentration, final concentration of the oxalate ion, easy. It's the same thing as Ka2. So this would be 6.4 times 10 to the minus five. And now that you know this, don't even do this second ice table. Do the first ice table, and then that final ion is going to be equal to the Ka2. Um, now this hydrogen oxalate, we just get that from um, from the ice table, the first ice table. Because remember, even here, when we react and we lose a little bit of that, we lose such a small amount that in essence is negligible. It's still going to be this concentration. So that amount would be our um, 0 0.0768 molar. And now it wants to know pH. So again, um, pH is just going to be this hydronium from the first ice table. The amount of hydronium produced here is so small, it doesn't change the pH. So let's go ahead and find pH. Uh, pH will be the negative log of the hydronium. Remember that's the same thing as hydrogen ion. Chemists use that interchangeably. Um, so that would be negative log of 0 0.0768. And this is actually a pretty good base. This is 1.1, or excuse me, pretty good acid is 1.11. So the pH right here, that's a strong acid. Okay, so there you have it. Um, now, I showed you why these two principles work, but when you do it in your homework, save yourself time. Here's what I want you to do. Take the first deprotonation, losing that first hydrogen, whatever you get for your hydronium, bam, you're done. Do you pH. Now, if this was a, um, a base where we are accepting multiple hydrogens, maybe you start with the oxalate ion, gain a hydrogen, take the hydrogen oxalate, gain another hydrogen. Um, it's the same principle. It's just you'll be taking the hydroxide and then from that hydroxide find pH. So you always use Ka1 or Kb1 when you are um, doing these polyprotic acids and bases. Um, Second really big takeaway, uh, if you need to find the final ion from the last deprotonation, easy, it equals the concentration, the concentration will be the same as that last Ka, so as this Ka2. All right, um, so you'll save yourself a lot of time. Good work. Um, other questions on acid-base equilibrium, please go to the acid-base equilibrium playlist on Lean Think. Thank you, have a really good day.